Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi again, everybody, and uh, welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Thanks for joining us. As you can see, it's time for Dr. Liz, where Art and I get to ask some semi-intelligent questions sometimes. Most of the time. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I, I have a question because uh, most of our the things that we talk about while are always uh, valuable and timely, uh, we have a Breast Cancer Awareness Month is coming up in October. And uh, we hear a lot, as we should, about the advances in uh, breast cancer as it affects women. And we have in previous conversations, but only sort of tangential to uh, uh, women's breast cancer and awareness, what have you. But there's also breast cancer in men uh, that is oftentimes not even thought is it possible, and even if it is possible, does it affect it in the same way? Is it as deadly? Is it as uh, curable? All those kinds of things. Uh, so for this Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, I wonder whether or not we could talk a little bit about breast cancer in men specifically, and uh, how we can pay attention to find out: Do we have it? Is it as frequent? All the, all the kind of things that. We just don't know enough about. Good point. Absolutely. Yes, it's very important to at least have the awareness that it exists, to, to your point. Luckily, it is 100 times less common in men than it is in women. This is a lot, not only to do with the fact that, of course, generally speaking, men are going to have significantly less breast tissue, than women do, but the tissue itself is even a little bit different. So whereas a female breast has, it has ducts where the milk passes through, but it also has lobules that make breast milk. Whereas the male breast, it has the ducts, but it doesn't really generally have lobules. So this is, all of this contributes to it being uh, about a hundred times less common. So a woman's risk of breast cancer over her entire lifetime in the United States is about one in eight. And for men, it's about one in 800. Wow. Okay, so it's a lot rarer. However, it's important to know that it can happen. Well, because of the different uh, structure of the breasts, men and women, Yes. when a man gets breast cancer, does it make it more difficult to treat? Excellent question. There's not as much information. Hmm. A lot of research is being done in this area and we need more research. The initial treatment is always surgery, usually mastectomy. Mm -hmm. And there's a question. So very commonly for women with breast cancer, they're gonna have mas the breast cancer removed or mastectomy followed by radiation. So for men, it's mastectomy and it's not clear whether radiation provides a survival, a long-term uh, benefit. Okay. That's, that's a what, little what bit. About, uh, what about, uh, uh, what would make uh, a man even think to look for it? Is there like a routine screening, let's say, uh, in a blood test uh, that uh, uh, your family doctor can do? Because why would a, a man, since it's, it's relatively rare, even think, would there be any symptoms uh, uh, you hear about for women where they have mammograms uh, and they have uh, uh, breast exams uh, to, to feel for lumps and things like that? And without getting into how effective all that stuff is, uh, but uh, uh, when, why would a man even think to look for uh, uh, this or to have it diagnosed? Yeah, that's an excellent question. It's usually found once there is a lump that can be palpated, right? So again, with less breast tissue there, it may be a little bit easier to feel and find a mass, okay? So that's important to do that just sort of regular, just, just palpation, just self-exam. That's a, the most common way that it's detected. There isn't a screening, as you said. Most men don't have enough breast tissue to be able to do like a, a screening mammogram. And again, a screening test 
the the benefit of a screening test largely depends on the frequency of the disease. Okay, so it'd be harder. That's why a mammogram is a more effective tool for women because it's a more common disease. So that's in terms of screening. Also to what you mentioned about a blood test, there is the breast cancer gene test. So anyone who's had a man in their family who has had breast cancer, I usually recommend that he get tested and possibly also his children. Okay, mm. this is a gene that is not passed on the X or Y chromosome. It is on the other regular, what we call the somatic genes. Is that like and the, so the, BRCA, the BRCA gene? That's exactly what it is, the oh. BRCA gene, the breast cancer gene. And we're looking for the mutation. Everyone has the gene, mm. right? So we're looking for, uh, there's actually quite a number of mutations that can be checked for. Okay. And these are passed, again, they're not on the sex chromosome. So a father can pass it to a son or a daughter. And a mother, of course, can pass it to a son or a daughter. That's interesting. And how yeah, predictive so is that? If let's say, you, I guess you have the BRCA gene and it's either, uh, an, I'll call it for lack of better term for me as a lay person, mutated or not. So if it's right. not mutated, you could still get breast cancer. But if it is, it's a much higher risk of That's that. That's correct. Is something much, like much that? higher. That's exactly right. Remember I said that one in eight for women in general over mm -hmm. a lifetime. Uh, although that does vary. That makes it sound scarier than it is uh, for women. However, for the uh, for the purposes of screening uh, a man, um, the breast cancer gene in a woman can give a risk of having breast cancer as high as 40 percent. Mm. And it also increases the risk of ovarian cancer in women. Mm. So it is very important and it's easy to check for the gene mutations. I think that um, I think it's becoming more talked about. I'm certainly encouraging more of my patients to get genetic counseling, draw the family tree with an expert who will ask all the right questions, other kinds of related cancers, right. prostate cancer, uh, breast mm -hmm. cancer, those those types of uh, possibly related cancers. But again, just to keep in mind that the gene is can be passed uh, through men. It's not only from mother to daughter. That's interesting. Yes. That's interesting. Now, for, more, for, more, for our male audience out there, uh, tell me if this is a decent takeaway. So if you have no history, if you do have a history in your family uh, of uh, breast cancer, you maybe should get the test for the, the BRCA gene and, and, uh, and then follow up from there. But uh, other than that, if you're just otherwise generally healthy, then when you're taking a shower from time to time, as you wash yourself, feel for anything that's unusual. Exactly. If it is, then bring it to the attention of your uh, family physician. That's absolutely right. Okay, well, this is fascinating about something that most people don't think about. Um, a, because it's not on the news as much, and B, because it's much more rare, but it's still something that early detection can help minimize the kinds of situations you're going to have to go through to take care of it. And as uh, we've mentioned from time to time, not only with you, but with other uh, people on, we're living longer lives. And for that, that means that a lot of us are going to get diseases that when our grandparents died at 60 and 65, yeah. they didn't get because they didn't live long enough to get it. Uh, in one way, thankfully, we are living long enough so that we're getting some of these things. But if you pay attention to it, then you can treat it and live longer still. So uh, pay attention to your health, even when you think it's not something that affects you. Good advice. Dr. Liz, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.